Welcome to Miss Prince Physical Science Connection. Today's lesson, the law of conservation of mass, in which we will be learning how to balance equations. Balancing equations is a way to help us make sense of the law of conservation of matter, which states that during a chemical reaction, matter or mass is neither created or destroyed. It is only changed into a new form. Now, in order to uh, make sense of balance, balancing equations and how it's done, uh, there's some vocabulary words that you're going to need to know. Uh, they'll also be posted down in the description box below. So the words that you need to know are coefficient, subscript, reactant, yields, and product. You also need a little bit of math skill in order to um, get through this process. The goal behind balancing equations is simple. It just means that if we have a math equation, whatever we have on the left of the equal sign has to be equal to the right. You're already familiar with this idea. Um, you've been doing 1 plus 1 equals 2, 3 plus 4 equals 7, 10 plus 5 equals 15. So whatever I have on the left has to equal whatever I have on the right. It is the same in balancing chemical equations. Instead of an equal sign, we have an arrow, and that arrow stands for yield. The values on the left-hand side of the equal sign are our reactants, and the value on the right side of the arrow sign is our product. So what has to happen here is that your reactants under that chemical reaction must still equal the product. So without further ado, we're going to take a look at a few sample problems on balancing equations and how it's done in order to make sense of the law of conservation of matter or the law of conservation of mass, which is just the same thing. And my guest student teacher will be helping us with that today. Just before we begin, I highly recommend that if you're still not familiar with the chemical symbols, that you keep your periodic table close by as none of the chemical names are visible on the screen. What you'll see are the chemical symbols. All right, so let's begin. This equation isn't balanced and we need to balance it. On the reactant side, you have one sodium and two bromine. On the product side, you have one sodium and one bromine. In order to balance out this equation, you would need to use a coefficient of two. So that would give you two sodium and two bromine. The bromine are now balanced on both sides. The sodium, however, is not. In order to get two sodium on the reactant side, you would use a coefficient of two and add an atom, and you would get two sodium. Sodium equals two bromine equals 2 sodium equals 2 and bromine equals 2 so this equation is now balanced on the reactant side you have one mercury one oxygen and two chlorine on the product side you have one mercury one chlorine and two oxygen. In order to balance out this equation you'd have to use the coefficient of two. You would put that in co put that coefficient in front of the HGO which would give you two mercury 
and two oxygen. The oxygen is now balanced on both sides. Now you have to balance out the mercury, which you would have another coefficient of two, putting it in front of the HDCl, which would give you two mercury and two chlorine. This equation is now balanced. Mercury, two, oxygen, two, chlorine, two, mercury, two, chlorine, two, and oxygen. Two. On the reactant side, you have one carbon and two hydrogen. On the product side, you have one carbon and four hydrogen. In order to balance this out, you'd use the coefficient of two. You'd put the two in front of the hydrogen here and add the two atoms, which would give you four hydrogen which would make this equation balanced. C equals 1, H equals 4. C equals 1, H equals 4.